My question is about uh, supporting the resistance in Iraq. Um, I've read a lot about the resistance, and I've read a lot of opinions um, in the left uh, that run the range of, of this debate around supporting the resistance, and I have to say that I'm still kind of confused about it. My instincts say to just support the resistance as it is, with no judgment, because we our judgment makes not that much of a difference in terms of scrutinizing what it is. So, um, what about, if, you're, if you're familiar, I, I don't need to talk about that anymore. Do you know what I'm talking about in terms of uh, how do we support uh, fundamentalist religious groups that progressives would have nothing really to do with in North America, in a North American context, yet it, it seems to be the only game in town in Iraq as far as uh, viable resistance. So, there's an ongoing debate in the left that says, you know, uh, we can't support uh, religious fanatics, um, and that we need to support, we need to sort of tease out the labor movement in Iraq and other sort of smaller players within there and support them. Uh, but I, I, I find that to be wholly ineffective. So I, I'd like to hear what you have to say about uh, how we support the resistance, the resistance in Iraq, and uh, if you can weigh in on that debate. Okay. Just checking, could everybody hear okay? Yeah. All right. yeah. Good. I, I have really no idea uh, of suggestions on how to support the Iraqi resistance in, in like a physical way. Um, I certainly wouldn't recommend trying to send money or something like that to be a, one way to get to Guantanamo. Um, and, and we already know uh, how immune Canadian citizens are for that. So um, I, I think just briefly though, to talk about the Iraqi resistance is that I mean, it sounds like we probably agree in that um, it's no one's position outside of Iraq, least of all people in the United States and other Western countries, to judge and determine what a resistance should look like. Um, this invasion and occupation took place because we as Americans failed in our duty as citizens in a theoretical democracy to stop a government from launching an illegal, immoral invasion and occupation. So therefore, by default, I have no place in judging, well, okay, Kalashnikovs are okay, but car bombs are out. You know, I have no moral justification to, that it would allow me to judge them for what kind of resistance they're going to use against the most powerful military on the planet. Um, but a little bit about the resistance is it's extremely complex. There isn't a resistance. There's a myriad collection of militias, uh, of mercenaries, of nationalists, of ex-militaries. I mean, you know, there, there's, there's one person responsible for at least founding the resistance, and it's Paul Brimmer, the head of the Coalition Provisional Authority, who overnight disbanded the Iraqi military. So literally, uh, uh, in 24 hours, you had hundreds of thousands of armed, trained, angry, unemployed men on the streets. And that, to this day, forms the backbone and arguably the skeleton of the resistance. But over time, it is becoming increasingly religious uh, and Islamist, uh, as is the rest of the country. Because when you erase the state, and you don't, not only do you not replace it, but it is replaced with violence, death, suffering, the erasing of the culture, the erasing of the, the, the shredding of the social fabric, and, and no infrastructure services at all, then uh, people turn to whatever structures left, the tribe and the mosque. And uh, the resistance is, of course, being affected by that as well. Um, but again, according to the US military, the maximum number of people launching attacks on them that are not Iraqis is between four and six percent. That's according to the US military. So it's a primarily Iraqi and nationalist resistance, but it is becoming more uh, fundamentalist and more. It, it, that, that's that the, the, the boundaries that used to exist are definitely being blurred. But uh, Iraq's basically being broken down into uh, different geographic areas governed by warlords, kind of like what's happened in Afghanistan, where uh, the US is basically saying, all right, the Shia, you know, like the Fadila party, you guys got this part of Basra, the, the Sadrists have this part, the Badr organization, the militia of SIIC, you've got this part. So it's basically being divvied up to warlords and their militias and, and tribes and their militias. And, and uh, that's, that's becoming really, really prominent too.